Hi, everybody. It's not wallpaper. It is paint. My husband and I painted triangles on our guest room wall. Welcome to the Efface for Radio video series. I'm Sarah LaDuke. Um, we are doing arts interviews here on Instagram because we are missing them live on WAMC. I am very excited. My heart is very, very open to be speaking with Jason Danieli today. Jason is a singer and actor and concert performer and recording artists. And he, his uh, original cast Broadway credits include Pretty Woman and The Visit and Curtains. He's been in Chicago a number of times. He was in the Full Monty. He is going to be with me any moment. But before I let him into the room, as it, the virtual room, as it were, let him join me, the series, um, I wanted to tell you what's coming up this week. Tomorrow, I'm speaking with the co-founder, executive director, and programmer of the Woodstock Film Festival, Myra Blaustein. I also added another episode for tomorrow. I'm going to speak with Pam Victor of Happier Valley Comedy because they are going to uh, be furloughing, shutting down for the time being, but they have an event on Saturday that I wanted to let you know about and, and Pam wanted to let you know about too. So I'll have her on it. I'll have well, 1 o'clock tomorrow, Myra Blaustein from the Woodstock Film Festival. At 4 o'clock tomorrow, Pam Victor from Happier Valley Comedy. And then... On Friday, I'm talking to my friend, New York Times staff, New York Times Magazine staff writer Sam Anderson about his recent huge, wonderful profile on Weird Al Yankovic. So that's coming up the rest of this week. And now let me do the button tapping and the dead eyes while I let Jason join me. Waiting, waiting. Connecting. Jason, hello. Hi, how are you? I am doing all right. How are you holding up? <laughs> Probably just like everybody else, moment to moment. You know? it's, a, it's really wonderful to see you. I thank you so much for giving some of your time right now. I've got a lot of time to give. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to start by asking you um, to share with the people viewing and with me what you're willing to share about where and how you're living right now, how you're coping, what your sort of day-to-day -day looks like during the pandemic. Yeah, um, uh, my late wife, Maren Maisie, and I uh, bought a, a, a second home up here in Columbia County. So uh, I'm in Hillsdale, New York. Uh, we've, we've lived up here for 12 years and it's always been you know, an escape from New York City and the business and everything. But uh, right now it's providing, you know, very welcome shelter. I'm surrounded by miles and miles of woods. I really don't see anybody. Um, so it's, it's like uh, super uh, isolated, uh, which in this time is, is great. But being a, a New Yorker, um, it feels very strange to not be in the middle of it all. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm glad, but mm -hmm. I just, I was in, on Broadway with the Full Monty during 9-11 and uh, Marin was in London uh, doing Kiss Me Kate. And she just kept saying, I, I wish I could be there. And I didn't understand it because I was in the middle of it all, but being removed from this and my friends and, and colleagues and extended family who, you know, live in the city. My heart is just with them every day. So it's it's a lot of social media. <laughs> yeah, lots of it. <laughs> of to a I'm fault. <laughs> all of them. Yeah, to a fault. Um, I have my guitar, banjo, my mountain dulcimer and harmonicas all lined out in front of the television. So I go to those occasionally and, and pick and pluck and, uh, you know, blow on the harmonica and stuff like that, just to get my mind away from... Uh, the news it just keeps on streaming in. and I right. have WAMC playing all the time and I'm so Thank grateful you. for the constant, you know, influx of information because it just keeps changing every moment. But every once in a while you're like, okay, enough of that. You gotta just Yeah, definitely, definitely. Take time. There's voices there's voices on the television and on the radio a lot yeah. that some are comforting and some are less so and sometimes those less comforting ones you just can't can't hear for a little while. <laughs> exactly. You, and, <clears throat> it just changes constantly. I mean, every day, and even a couple times during the day, you hear one thing and you yeah. get your mind wrapped around that situation and that goal and that, and then all of a sudden it 
takes a 180 or a right turn and you, you're you're left being flummoxed and you know I, I think I might have mentioned in in the email correspondence that we had leading up to this that this is kind of my Walden Pond moment right Henry David yeah. Thoreau experience I'm, I'm really trying to embrace that I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by trees and nature and mm -hmm. I've got bird feeders out and all my <laughs> my tufted tit mouses and the black cap chickadees are keeping me company and trying to embrace um the isolation and and live in it fully as opposed to feeling afraid and constricted by isolation i have seen on your social media you've done some group calls with casts you've been a part of that must have been kind of fun you probably didn't didn't do that much before because everybody's so busy exactly it's the one time where you know you can catch everyone at home, no one <laughs> right. at a concert, no one's, you know, filming a TV show. And it, I was with the, the original cast of uh, most everyone of uh, Floyd Collins, which I did off Broadway at Playwrights Horizons. And, uh, you know, just seeing everyone's face and, and being able to recall that family unit. You know, we have the luxury and also the like the heartbreak of having so many um, families and they're, they're each wrapped around a different show, the Flo Monty or Floyd Collins or the visit and to reunite and, and see your family members that I haven't seen some of those people in 23 years. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as small a world in the business as it sometimes seems. Well, everybody's always scattered to the winds and truly overbooked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so what did you talk about on those calls? Not asking you know, to, to spill any tea, but just did, was it about like remembering the experience of the show or everything going on now or what kind of conversations were you having? Yeah, a, a variety of them. Um, we generally start uh, with where are you? How are you doing? Right what's it like to grocery shop where you are <laughs> you know, contrast <laughs> compare. Do you, is everyone adhering to the rules i mean i'm in new york state so we have you know a strongly suggested mandate to be wearing masks in certain uh scenarios and gloves and and are they doing that in the city are they doing that in the country um because as an actor i think generally we're uh, very empathetic uh people we can see how people might not want to adhere to the rules at the same time knowing it's so important beyond any comprehension that we've of of the situation that we're in that we've had before yeah. it's like yeah you just got to do it and um going hey, i understand the young the young people might not want to do that so we're just kind of chewing over the societal um aspects of it all and mm -hmm. and uh and and our hearts just are kind of shooting through zoom at one another finding right. out how we're doing then we start you know inevitably going hey you remember that time we <laughs> during previews and the lights were completely off <clears> and uh, <laughs> we were caught in the full monty on broadway <laughs> right <laughs> completely naked the lights were wrong you know and having a good laugh about all that so and, and i think it's I know a couple of other uh, Broadway companies like Titanic is having a, a Zoom meeting on Thursday. And, uh, it's, I think we're going to do it a, a few times as opposed to just a one-off right. because we're starved for uh, contact, not attention, yeah. you know, just <laughs> right. human contact. Yeah, I'm so definitely. happy to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I did. We early, early in this one Saturday, I woke up early and I had a Zoom call with my best friend in Saranac Lake. And then I got on the phone with a new coworker because we hadn't really had time to get to know each other. And she said, you know, I wish we weren't in isolation so we could have coffee. And I was like, we'll make a cup of coffee and we'll do a video call. And then I talked to my sister and my niece a lot. L long way of saying the next morning when I woke up, I said to my husband, Paul, what do you want to do today? And he was like, can we do fewer video calls? <laughs> I was like, well, you can, but I'm, I'm, I'm still reaching out to everybody. I'm like, I, I need to talk to people. <laughs> but I was like, but I'll point the camera at you less. And he was like, okay, deal. <laughs> yeah, I find um, 
uh, I am in contact with um, our former dog walker in Manhattan. Uh, she sends, she actually has a, a Twitter feed called Ar Ar Arts Gazing. And so she is putting up content, um, virtual content of, of different museums, uh, not only in New York, but around the country and she spotlights them. And so she gives me a little sneak preview and sends me New Yorker cartoons and stuff. But she, she took a picture of where she would walk Oscar in Riverside Park and the trees are blooming, the cherry cherry blossoms are out and and there's green. Yeah. But up here, it was snowing earlier today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I keep looking out the window Getting today. Out is not a deep... Yeah, it's, and it's very windy and cold today too. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I'm craving for that. I, I've been taking some uh, long walks uh, being out in the country. I, I've got a, a 10 mile loop, a nine mile loop and an eight mile loop, depending on, you know, how much anxiety I need to burn off. Yeah. Yeah. And walking outside <laughs> is one of the best things for that. So that's, that's great that you have the, the loops. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This, this is the a Face for Radio video series on for WAMC. I'm Sarah LaDuke. I'm speaking with actor, singer, performer, general, wonderful dude, Jason Danielly. Um, <laughs> what was derailed for you work-wise when you had to escape to Hillsdale? What were you tr hoping to do or working on? What was in, in process? I was in um, Sarasota, Florida at the Oslo Repertory Theater. Uh, we were in rehearsal. We were three weeks into rehearsal for our new musical, uh, that Frank Galati, who uh, directed Ragtime, the musical on, on Broadway, and he also uh, adapted and directed the Steppen the very famous Steppenwolf production of Grapes of Wrath mm -hmm. on Broadway. He adapted a James Agee novel uh, that won the Pulitzer for Literature in 1957 called The Death in the Family. And um, he did the adaptation and asked Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty, who wrote the music and lyrics for Ragtime, if they wanted to collaborate. Mm -hmm. So we did a reading in 2018, did a workshop last year, and we were getting ready to mount the world premiere uh, at uh, the Oslo Repertory Theater. So we were, you know, in a windowless, actually they did have, did have windows, it was Florida, it was, it was a nice studio. You know, we <laughs> I was were, gonna say, usually they're, they're pretty, pretty dark we're usually all and you, lighting exactly but we were just <laughs> having a, an incredibly fulfilling artistic time exploring this uh not only the novel but the the pulitzer prize winning uh play that was adapted by uh, tad moselle called um all the way home and um it's strangely enough about uh grief and uh you know, uh, family, uh, have, uh, the father of the, of the family dies abruptly in a car accident and how the reverberations of grief uh, ripple through the family and how they deal with it with religion or without religion, without, with or without faith. And um, grieving still uh, the loss of my wife in 2018, it was finally <laughs> I was getting back up on the stage in a, in a, peace with extended family with Frank and Lynn and Steve and feeling completely surrounded uh, and embraced in that work situation. And then a global pandemic comes out and, <laughs> you know, sweeps your legs out from underneath you. No, you couldn't. You, if someone wrote it, it wouldn't wouldn't be believed. Be like, this, this right. plot seems a little bit out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we had to stop, of course, and, and rightfully so. And uh, I had driven to Florida. Uh, so I was able to not have to get on a plane, which allayed some, you know, nervous nerves yeah. that I think a lot of people had getting on a plane Definitely. and everything was shutting down. And uh, Lynn Aaron's actually lives just one town down from me here uh, in Columbia County. I didn't County. know so we... that. <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't know that Lynn Aaron's was in our region. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She, um, actually, that's why Marion and I moved up here. We were doing concerts at Tanglewood with Boston Pops. And, yeah, which is uh, so wonderful. Traveling up here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and Lynn was like, you guys got to come up here. And so, yeah, she was the kind of driving force. Uh, so we drove up from Florida and got up here and immediately, you know, self-isolated. But in a way, 
you know, we're looking at, we actually had a Zoom uh, conference with our, uh, Knoxville is the name of the musical with mm -hmm. the team. And it's been rescheduled for next year this time. Okay. So we'll go back down to Sarasota, providing people want to go into the theater by next year this time right. and uh, put, put it back up on its feet. Yeah. That's kind of the strange thing. It is a, a tricky we thing because everybody. No, go ahead. You're, I think you're going right on no, the same path as I was. Well, I was just going to say that the knowing when people want, will want to go back to be a part of an audience is very strange because everybody who enjoys concerts or shows has had them canceled and misses, misses them so much. It's, you know, a huge part of a lot of people's lives. But then the fact of sitting close to strangers is going to feel weird for a long time. It's like when you watch TV shows now and people shake hands and you're like, well, what are they doing? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, they're not supposed to be doing that. It's like this filmed a year ago, but no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, um, and not only the audience, because uh, I'm, I'm directing uh, more these days. I actually have a production in the fall that I'm waiting to see if we're going to be able to, to do um, not only for the audience, but the actors. Um, right. I'm directing a, a production of Floyd Collins. Well, Floyd gets trapped in a cave and people have to crawl over the top of him to try and, you know, free him from his demise. How do you do that when you try to stay six feet away? Yeah. Or, or do you ask your actors, you know, would you please put your life on the line to, to entertain these, these people? I think we're at a, at, a, at a point in live theater, at least for this time being, that there's this, going to be a, a learning curve and an evolution of some sort that I'm, I'm excited to see how we innovate live theater to allow for this pan, for this epidemic to exist until it doesn't exist. Right. And hopefully we'll have, you know, uh, a vaccine and, uh, and medication to help uh, if you do get it as soon as possible. In the meantime, you just kind of biding your time, waiting for it all to, to form. Yeah, it's unima I mean, it's unimaginable. This the the reality of right now is like, what, <laughs> what happens yeah. next? It has to change, though. It would be, I think, it would be worse. It would feel worse for a lot of things to just go like snap back to pretend they could snap back to normal, and then for people to force that. That would be worse. Yeah. And I think that's where we get at, where the anxiety really escalates for many people as trying to get back to something of normalcy. Um, and, and not to, to bring up, I've just been on this journey with... No, I've, I've, you know, full, I full. will listen to you talk about it as much as you want. I don't want to pry, but I'll listen to anything. <laughs> well, you know, it's been a year, seven <clears throat> months, uh, and like two weeks that Marin passed. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's every moment. We were not only husband and wife, but partners. We would concertize with symphony orchestras around the world or cabarets, and um, and we were a great team. So yeah. her absence, especially in this house that, you know, we wanted to retire and, and you know, eventually down the road die. Um, it, one was phoning in. Oh, that's okay. Um, trying to navigate dealing with grief and moving forward in life, it's never going to be what it was. Right. And there are things that I will always carry, not just memories, but things, the person who I am now, I was shaped from our, you know, 22 year relationship. And the, the future is going to be completely different in its own yeah. thing. And so I have a little bit of experience going through it right now of where I think the rest of the world is, is, is grieving what we had before, not knowing how to deal with that anxiety of being alone also uh, is a part of it. And then moving forward, knowing that that is the past, what the future is going to be is going to be just different and, and not trying to force it or, or hoping for it so strongly that um, it creates uh, other kinds of emotional and mental 
issues you know, right. to deal with. You have gone on at least two huge physical journeys since Marin's passing. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about those and if they, if they helped at all <laughs> or not? I don't know if help <laughs> is the right word, but it looked like yeah. they were, you know, very thorough, thoroughly engaging at least. But yeah, a good friend of mine, uh, composer Ricky Ian Gordon, um, had lost his partner um, in 1996. And he was just one of those people that I had spoken with after Marin passed. He uh, accompanied me uh, at Marin's memorial. This, I sang a song of his. And um, he was just saying what his experience was with grieving Jeffrey. And he said, your life is decimated. It, nothing can be any worse for you uh, right now, possibly ever, um, truly. Nothing uh, could be uh, more devastating uh, than losing Marin. And he said, take this opportunity, if you can, to go on a pilgrimage. He said it could be a week vacation. It could be two weeks. It could be a month. It could be two months. It could be a year or two years. but." seek out something that is larger than you that you've maybe never thought about experiencing. And so I had that in the back of my mind. I was doing Pretty Woman, the musical on Broadway and mm -hmm. uh, just trying to, you know, punch the time card and collect the paycheck, which I was so grateful for and to be surrounded by such a loving company of actors and management and crew and orchestra. Um, but my sister, who is a professor of acting at Northern Kentucky University, um, she was going to India to study yoga and meditation in the Himalayas. And she's like, do you want to go to the Himalayas to meditate? And I said, oh, yeah, I guess I do. I, <laughs> yeah. That was not on my radar at all. And so I joined her for two-week meditation uh, in the Himalayas with this incredible uh, yoga and meditation school and then stayed there and had um, uh, a guide take me to mostly Buddhist, uh, but also Hindu-centric Hindu uh, places uh, and had that reflective time in a f completely uh, foreign country and not only uh, ge uh, geographically, but every way of living and speaking and eating and smelling, everything was so extraordinarily different. And I came back feeling a little more at peace, a little more, um, but then I came right back and went, did concerts and, yeah. you know, and, and I am continuing my advocacy for a couple of different cancer organizations and putting together a fundraiser for that. and a gala that is for cancer support community that now has an, an uh, award in Marin's honor. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing that stuff and um, I decided to take the last couple months of 2019 for myself. And so I did a cross country pilgrimage from here to California and back. And I, I drove and I towed my motorcycle on the back. So wherever I would stop for a couple of days, I'd, get on the bike and go through the painted desert, you know, the petrified forest, um, Big Sur, Yosemite. And that was the, that was what I was looking for, uh, a time to be completely alone, no guides, um, no tours, no obligations until after the first of the year, I wasn't going to take any job. And, and that was great. I was self isolating yeah. <laughs> the last couple of months of 2019. <clears throat> And, you know, of course, ironically enough, I'm re ready to get back up on the horse. Let's go to Florida and do a new musical. What do you mean a global pandemic? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, did you have a motorcycle before or is that new? That's new. Yeah? Do you, That's sort do of you like it? I'm scared of them. Fast. I'm scared of motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are. I find as soon as I say I have a motorcycle, people are like, be careful. I'm like, well. I totally understand it. And, <laughs> and you're um, like, no, I won't be. I won't be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Here's careful. Yeah, no, I, Marin and I would I have taken a couple of vacations to Bermuda and we would get on scooters and she'd be on the back and just love that feeling. We were in Paris for our 
first and only time in 2017 and took a motorcycle and sidecar tour through Paris. Cool. And um, we, there's certain like certain freedom. Um, it's like being on a horse and riding your horse through Yosemite or Paris. You're you're alive. You're in the middle of it. Um, I don't think about the danger other than being, you know, careful and cautious when I'm, I'm just loving living inside or outside, but living right. inside the world mm -hmm. and not being closed off. Yeah. Before I forget, I want to point out um, the cancer support community is to learn more about them is cancer support community.org. You also work with Tina's wish, um, which is ovarian cancer research and that's Tina's wish.org. And then of course, the Actors Fund, which is theactorsfund.org. Um, before yes. we go, I hope that I emailed you to pre prepare you for this. And if I didn't, I apologize, but um, I think I did. <laughs> um, is there any kind of art, music, television, film you want to recommend for people at home? What are you, if you're viewing or absorbing anything that you want to share the, the recommendation you did, of? You did alert me and you good. said high brow or low brow. Yes. So I have one of each. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll start with the highbrow, um, just because it makes me sound smart. Um, you are no, smart. The National, Theater, <laughs> <laughs> the National Theater has been airing um, some of their plays that they had filmed. Yeah. Um, two go uh, one Man, Two Governors. One Man, uh, Two Governors. James yep. Corden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think they're streaming tomorrow. They're starting at um, Midsummer's. I think Midsummer Night's Dream. I haven't um, seen yet, like, but it, that sounds right. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and so it comes out, they're eking it out every couple of weeks. But I'm, I'm so happy to be able to see live theater and people crawling all over one another <laughs> and right. at the other time and, and place and space. Um, so there's that. And then- National you know, Theater Live, people can Google it. <laughs> this whole zoom thing is cracking me up because I've connected with people from high school that I have not seen in 30 plus years. And a few of them came to see uh, my cabaret concert fundraiser at uh, Feinstein's 54 below last fall. Mm -hmm. And so there's like five of us from choir who get on zoom every Tuesday night, tiger Tuesday, go Oakville tigers. <laughs> and, um, and we have like, um, we catch up about families and everything like that. But uh, right now we have a movie club instead of a book club. And we're watching movies from our high school years. So yes, yesterday we had um, an officer and a gentleman, which I had never seen. Uh, no, I've first not seen one that either. Night. It's very good. Okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> uh, the first night was White Nights with Mikhail Baryshnikov and Gregory Hines. And the and the other one was um, Saint Elmo's Fire, which if you didn't see it in the eighties, don't watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a nostalgia for it, you could probably skip it. But that's that's the, the it's not particularly lowbrow, but it's just kind of like this strange little gift of old friends uh, feeling nostalgic in a time where we can do that. Yeah, you have the opportunity. To yeah. yeah. I have um I have a movie club too and it used to be in person we'd go to the independent movie theater here on Tuesdays because it's a dollar off and then it started like a decade ago with some of my coworkers at WMC and I've like looped it and evolved it with different people I'm the only constant <laughs> I call myself the benevolent <laughs> benevolent dictator of movie club because pretty much I pick and if you want to come fine and if you don't mm, girl um, but it's <laughs> actually also it's where Paul and I got close because we met through mutual friends and then he started coming all the time. And I was like, why is this guy coming so much? Oh, um, <laughs> but, um, but we, we had a virtual one last night and we watched a goofy movie. Have you ever seen a goofy movie? As in goofy from Disney? Yeah. No, I haven't. <laughs> it came out in like, it's, 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 it's good. It's good. The mute, the songs are good. <laughs> like they're fun. There's like good, good lyric like funny rhymes like good creative lyric writing i mean it's good it's good but it's like it's a cartoon from the 90s and the kids we goofy, had some of our goofy. a goofy movie yeah and we had a um, movie. some of our my my sister and my niece watched with us and joined the zoom and then my friends with kids around albany also joined and the one of my friend's daughters charlotte was like 
I just want to know why he has a sweatshirt, but with short sleeves. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I have no idea why. Because, <laughs> because he's goofy. Yeah, <laughs> so silly. <laughs> so yeah, cool. Um, Jason, I don't really want to say goodbye, but but it takes forever can to re-upload the video anyway. Go ahead. Yes, whatever you want. Go. Can I do one thing? Just yeah. um, specifically about, um, I've been thinking about this a lot, cancer support communities, yes. you know, organizations that helps people who are living with cancer and their, their families by uh, helping them navigate, understanding their insurance, if they need financial assistance with to get to their um, treatments. And with the epidemic, the pandemic right now, I mean, I'm so glad Marin isn't here to have to try and ford her way from the Upper West Side to Memorial Sloan Kettering to, to devastate her immune system in order to, you know, survive the tr cancer. So um, they have, I'm looking at it right now to make sure I have it correct. Um, they have a toll-free number and, and Cancer Support Community um, has, uh, they have their helpline open seven days a week now. They usually ha only have it open five days a week. Seven okay. days a week, Monday to Friday, <clears throat> 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern, and Saturdays and Sundays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time as well. And um, the, the number is 1-888-409-4166. And, 1-888-409-4166. And I'll post that in the info with this when I when I archive it on YouTube. That'd be great because sure, so many so people are, are suffering in, in a variety of ways uh, outside of the coronavirus. And uh, I just wanted to help out in any way those people who are, who are living with cancer right now. So. Jason, thank you so much. Thank you. And if you want to um, just talk again another time without people watching, let me know. <laughs> okay. All great. right. Thank you so Be well. much. I'll give my best to Paul. I will. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That was the fantastic Jason Danieli. This is a Face for Radio video series wrapping up for today. But uh, let me remind you again that tomorrow at 1 p.m. I'm going to talk to Mayur Blaustein from the Woodstock Film Festival. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. I'm going to talk to Pam Victor from Happier Valley Comedy. And then on Friday, I'm going to talk to Sam Anderson about his New York Times Magazine profile of Weird Al. If you want to read a wonderful, wonderful profile of Weird Al, it's available online. It's a part of the New York Times Magazine. If you search Sam Anderson Weird Al, you'll find it. If you go to New York Times Magazine Weird Al, you'll find it. You'll find it. You'll find it. Um, it's wonderful. And uh, I can't wait to make Sam tell me all about it. So thank you again for joining. If you want to see this again, it will be in WAMC's story live for about 24 hours. And I also am saving them and putting them up on YouTube and then linking those from WAMC social media. If you need news updates or want to hear any other WAMC programming, the URL is of course WAMC.org. This week, Joe Donahue has a fantastic interview with Ann Tyler on the book show that is online. And this morning we had a round table environmental panel with Judith Ank, Jeff Goodell and Elizabeth Colbert joining Joe and Alan. And that was wonderful. And then Joe has this like incredible, just moving interview that he did with Terry Tempest Williams. That's also online at WAMC.org. So the station is there where the staff is working. We're so grateful for our listeners. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep doing it as much as we can, and I am very grateful for the opportunity to be here speaking with people in the arts and sharing that with you. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be back. You'll see me tomorrow.